You are listening to the Hydac Podcast. In each episode, we share our knowledge with you in topics related to hydraulics and automation and control, from the basics to the current trends. Stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Hydac Podcast. I'm your host, William Shaw, and on this episode, we'll be discussing pumps and various types commonly found in industrial applications. Here with me today in our studio, I have Mr. Ali Nijat. Ali is a mechanical engineer with over 15 years experience in the fluid power industry. He's also a certified pressure vessel inspector and an asset reliability advocate and works for HIDAC as the national development manager for industrial hydraulics. So Ali, welcome. Firstly, would you be able to tell us what is a pump and what is the function of a pump? Hello, William. Uh, thank you for having me on this episode of the podcast again. Uh, it's a great question. Uh, in hydraulics industry really and the fluid power industry in general uh, a pump is a beating heart of of uh, probably 80 90 percent uh, of the active systems out there uh, the primary function of a pump is converting mechanical energy to hydraulic energy now what does that mean uh, hydraulic energy is is typically uh, consisting of two components. One is the amount of fluid that we are uh, dispensing or moving or displacing and the head or uh, in simple terms maybe the pressure of that fluid. So the combination of the two uh, form hydraulic energy. Now a pump converts a mechanical energy to hydraulic energy so a mechanical energy can have uh, different formats as well. So we need to drive that pump in order for it to uh, produce uh, hydraulics energy. The way we drive it, it can be by an electrical source, like an electrical motor. It can be a mechanical source like a diesel engine or an internal combustion engine. Or it can be a pneumatic motor. Uh, as, as long as we've got that, uh, that drive or a mechanical drive component available, and if it's strong enough to, to turn our pump, uh, the pump will then convert that mechanical energy uh, to the hydraulic source of energy. So Ali, before we dive too much into the uh, hydraulic components of, of pumps and uh, what they're used for, would you be able to explain the difference between water and hydraulic pumps and what the, some of the differences between them are? Well, what's typically referred to as a water pump is generally a, a centrifugal type arrangement uh, whereas in hydraulics industry uh, when we talk about pumps uh, we refer to a positive displacement type arrangement uh, now the broad difference between the two is the efficiencies involved and also the head that the two pump can can generate so water pumps and again, we're talking about water pumps that are widely uh, used in household applications. You know, if you've got a, a rainwater tank pump or if you've got, uh, you know, uh, household application types or, you know, where we've got, you know, mass water to move, uh, they're typically centrifugal pumps with a lower head or a lower pressure rating and not quite as efficient as a positive displacement pump. In hydraulic and fluid power industry, uh, typically the pumps are, which are in use are of a nature of positive displacement. So Ali, I have heard this term of positive displacement pumps thrown around a little bit. Would you be able to discuss that a little bit more and provide a little bit more detail on what that actually is? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, positive displacement pumps typically make the fluid move by trapping a fixed volume of fluid from their suction end uh, and then moving it and forcing it through to the discharge port. And that concept is referred to as positive displacement. So just bringing it back to the hydraulic world now, uh, are there some more common types of pumps used in the hydraulic and fluid power industry compared to other types? So again, uh, given the common type of pump used in hydraulic industry is positive displace, displacement pumps, they branch out into a number of different 
arrangements. The most common ones are gear pumps, vein pumps, or piston pumps. The three of them are widely in used for in uh, for different types of applications. We also have have a screw pumps, uh, which are of a lower pressure, uh, typically used for lubrication systems, so not quite high pressure uh, services and and systems. Uh, but then when we start talking about gear pumps and vein pumps, uh, the operating pressure and the pressure rating of these pumps are uh, a little bit higher than the screw pumps and then uh, on the more heavy duty side uh, of this spectrum we've got the piston pumps. Uh, so the four of them are uh, the main types or branches of positive displacement pumps that are widely in use in, uh, in fluid power industry. Thanks Ali, thanks for clearing that up. So what are some of the advantages of a piston pump and why would I use that over some of the other pumps you've just mentioned? Yeah, piston pumps are typically used in uh, applications with a higher reliability nature. Uh, so they are more reliable, they produce less contamination and they introduce less contamination to the system. Uh, they have quite a wide range of, of sizes, so they can start from a very, very small uh, size, from a few cc's all the way to uh, quite a large uh, capacity uh, and uh, above all I think the most important thing about a piston pumps is embedded controllers that we can build into the arrangement of the piston pump uh, to make them uh, smarter and to make them to react to the application requirements in a smarter way you know things like we hear the word controller on a on a particular pump so what a controller does is it regulates the way that a piston pump behaves uh, in relation or in reaction to different application requirements. For example, you can have a pressure controller uh, type control on a piston pump. Uh, the, the function of that controller is perhaps cutting off the fluid and maintaining the pressure when you reach a certain uh, set point uh, dictated by the controller itself. You can have load sense type controllers which regulate the flow of the pump uh, in reaction with, to whatever the circuit or uh, the system is demanding. You can have horsepower type controllers which are regulating the amount of power that a pump consumes at any given time. So if you've got a diesel engine which can produce a certain amount of uh, torque and, and horsepower, then you can have either a torque control or a horsepower control on a pump which regulates, which, which gives you the, the assurance that the pump power consumption or torque is not going to exceed uh, the value that the diesel engine is generating. And quite a number of other more complex controllers that are available. So that makes the piston pumps a bit superior. Obviously, we've got we've got similar type arrangements on on a vein pump. We can have a, uh, a pressure compensator controller on a vein pump, you know, which pretty much works uh, very similar and based on the same principles as it does on a on a piston pump. But again, piston pumps are superior in terms of the pressure that they can generate, uh, in terms of wide range of capacities, and also being very smart if they've got the right controllers embedded to them as to how to react to different requirements of the system. Thanks Ali for clearing that up and talking us through some of the advantages of the piston pump. If we were after one of these pumps, what are some of the design considerations that would need to be considered and how roughly how long would it take to order one of these from HIDAC? So in terms of how long it takes for you to order one of these ones, you can order it straight away. but uh, we've got obviously a stocking program for uh, quite a number of di different types of these pumps that we can, uh, you know, select. If, if we can select the pump from the stocking program, uh, we can ship it over straight away. And obviously, you can uh, see the availability of these pumps on the website uh, and online shopping portal. Uh, 
Um, but in terms of design considerations, um, there are quite a number of different things that you need to consider. Uh, obviously, you can uh, reach out to HIDAC uh, fluid power engineers and ask for their suggestions and recommendations. Uh, they have a wealth of knowledge in terms of you know what uh, pump type potentially suits your type of application. Uh, some people come and say, look, we've got this pump already fitted onto this machine and we need a replacement for it. Again, as part of our stocking program, uh, we've got uh, quite a substantial uh, number of different lists which are cross-referencing uh, products available in the market with uh, what HIDAC has as a standard stocking range. Uh, so we can go to those lists, but if we're unlucky and we can't quite find it in that uh, cross-reference list, uh, we look at different parameters like the type of pump, you know, its mounting, the connections, you know, the hose ends, the piping, uh, the shaft size, pressure rating, flow rate, if you need any particular controller on it, what type of environment we're installing the, this pump under, uh, and other design parameters that, again, uh, high fluid power engineers are pretty good at uh, putting them all together and coming up with uh, recommendations as to what type of pump will suit your application the best. Thank you, Ali, for all the information provided today. That certainly helps assisting uh, everyone with their knowledge in pumps and uh, the functions of a pump. That concludes our episode. Thank you very much for everyone for listening and stay tuned for more podcasts on the way. Thanks for joining us on this episode of HIDAC Podcast. For an in-depth learning on the subject you've just listened to, enrol on the technical training at HIDAC Australia. For more information, visit our website, hidac.com.au. HIDAC. Global presence, local competence.